Hi everyone, welcome to the Ask Dr. Lin show, where I answer questions that hit Bakerpedia every day. I am Dr. Lin from Bakerpedia, the only place you should go first when you need all your technical answer questions answered on the go. What I do on the show is to answer the questions that are most important to commercial bakers. Yes, you know, when your dough is coming out of the mixer at 8,000 pounds, four times an hour, on three lines, who has the time to do an hour-long research on the internet? Well, this is what the show is for. Place any comments on the topics that you're researching on Bakerpedia, and if you're lucky, I will answer them on this show. All right. I'm going to focus today's show on the basics of dough. Today's show is brought to you by Diasna. With their Wendell mixers, their counter-rotating mixing bars reduces mix times by up to 50%, increasing water absorption from 5 to 8%, thus reducing heat accumulation and producing cooler doughs. With a ROI through increased water absorption and shorter mixing times, and the ability to handle capacities of up to 1,300 pounds per batch, Wendell mixers are powerful yet flexible. Learn more at diosna.com today. Before we answer the questions, let's talk about flour. Flour is a fine powder made from the grinding of seeds, nuts, roots, and most commonly, grains. The first flour was created in 6000 BC by crushing grains between two stones. Since then, the production and variety of flour has steadily increased in technology. What are the types of flour? They are grain-based versus grain-free or gluten-free flours. Grain-based flours are by far the most commonly used and made from sources such as wheat, rye, or spelt. With a growing interest in gluten-free baked goods, bakers have begun using more grain-free flours such as rice, sorghum, or corn. There are many varieties of wheat. This map shows that heart rate winter and heart rate spring the best kind of wheat for bread is mainly grown in the Midwest. While soft wheat grown in the Pacific Northwest is great for making cakes and cookies. Wheat kernels consist of endosperm, bran, and germ. Each of these influences the final characteristics of the flour. We are especially interested in the endosperm as this provides the majority of the gluten proteins that make wheat flour functional. The gluten proteins. The gluten proteins in a wheat flour is what provides the elasticity and resiliency. If you're having flour inconsistencies, the gluten or protein content is where you would like to start first. For variety bread and half breads, a wheat protein content of 14% and higher would work best. For pan or sandwich bread, 11 to 12 percent would work great. For pizza or general all-purpose, 9.5 to 12.5 protein would be good. Anything less than 9.5 percent protein can be used for pies, cookies, or cakes. A main component of wheat flour is, of course, the gluten protein. Although a small part at about 10 to 15 percent of the flour, it is the most important and functional part. Protein quantity is the main indication of how much gluten is in there. So, does it mean that if this number is higher, the flour will have a better bread baking quality? Not necessarily. A high protein quantity doesn't equate to a good protein quality. For example, just as a comparison, a hard winter wheat may have a protein co quantity as high as 13%, but it has a worse baking, uh, bread baking quality than, say, a hard rate spring at 11%. If you're cross comparing between flour blends, and um, just don't depend on protein quantity, look at the protein quality as well. Um, and protein quality can be quantified by the Farino graph 
um, the freedograph par parameters like peak height and peak time, MTI and stability, will all reflect the quality of the proteins. And this should be used to compare whether one flower is better at producing bread than the other. All right, now that you know about flour, flour quality and quantity, let's talk about the next most important thing. Water is made up of three atoms, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Together, they make a major constituent of all living matter. Water is the second most important ingredient in baking. Look for our water topic on our website. There is hard water and soft water. Which one is yours? Water has a varying amount of calcium, magnesium, and sodium, depending on its source. The amounts of these minerals can influence how it performs in a baked product. Hard water has a high mineral content, which adds strength and speeds up fermentation in dough. Softer water has a lower mineral content, decreasing dough strength and fermentation speed. When water is added to dry ingredients, starch particles are hydrated, dough is initially formed, and subsequent water molecules begin hydrating proteins to form gluten strength. When further energy is placed into the dough through mixing and kneading, the dough becomes homogenized and then developed. The right amount of water or adequate water absorption is required for you to develop the dough properly. Inadequate water will make your dough tight and bucky, leaving little pan flow. And as a result, you will get white edges at the bottom of the bread. On the other hand, too much water will de delay development time, increasing your mixing time and creating a stickier dough that will leave a mess at the dough divider. Good luck. I once added more water than I needed to at the mixer and I had everyone complaining that it wouldn't come out of the mixer and it stuck the dough divider up. So don't do that. Proper levels of water is needed to provide adequate gluten hydration of the dough. Um, so recent advances with high impact hydration techniques has shown that if the gluten portion of the flour is hydrated at a faster pace, the dough develops faster. Therefore, it's vital that proper water levels be available to the gluten proteins for them to work properly. And this is to create a better network. Well, water, it's important. Don't forget that. Oh, one more thing. Water can be used to control the temperature of your dough or better, so use it well to your advantage. Flour is made up of gluten, starch, and lipid particles. Because gluten proteins are what makes wheat flour special, let's focus in on that portion. When water is added to flour, then mixed, the gluten proteins in the dough gets hydrated, aligned, and becomes fully developed. A well and fully developed dough should be able to provide you a thin window pane as you stretch the dough between your fingers. This is the test for full development. Full development provides a thin film of dough that is able to keep the gases in during fermentation and proofing. The third and last important thing in dough basics is... Ah! The wonderful tiny organisms that are carb lovers that produces the gas you need to raise your dough. It's funny how most of us think that the yeast job is just to produce gas, but really, yeast has other functions in dough as well. It produces alcohol that provides a deeper aroma to the bread and enzymes and acids that help the dough mature and hydrate further. That is why after two to four hours of fermentation, the dough feels fuller and drier. This is because the enzymes in the yeast work with the acids on the polymeric nature of dough. Interesting, isn't it? Yeast fermentation is really multi-directional.
Well, it really depends on what you bake. If you're a growing bakery and you use both of these forms of yeast, I would suggest streamlining your purchasing process and just move to one form of yeast. The impact of the flavor from the different kinds of yeast is insignificant compared to the fermentation time and type of process. Of course, compressed yeast is fresher and reacts quicker, but when you scale up at, as a bigger bakery, this form of yeast is so difficult to manage and many bakers switch to dry yeast. Dry yeast, of course, is the easiest to handle. You can ship them in as LTL on pallets and save some money there. Um, bakers love dry yeast or quick rice dry yeast because it has a longer shelf life and it's easy to dispense. However, it's also the most expensive form of yeast. So if you're a growing bakery and you're ordering pallets of yeast that last less than two weeks, it's time to think about cream yeast and liquid tank solutions. That's a smart question and one that I like to hear mainly because it means that you are growing. Go to our yeast spec page and you will see the total solids on that page. Just use the table on here to calculate the equivalence of total solids from dry yeast to cream yeast. This is where you should start. After this, do some tests to determine the same guessing power. This is when you ask your yeast supplier to send some free yeast, some free cream yeast, to run some tests for at least eight continuous batch or two or a two hour run. Um, remember, yeast is an important ingredient. So a switch in form or suppliers need to be taken seriously. Do this with many commercialization runs accomplished at the specified fermentation times. Just get it right. Once yeast is in a warm and moist environment, they start working. However, yeast is the most active at 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. It reduces its activity at about 105 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. And it's killed at temperatures above 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. Yeast is a resilient little organism. Even in the reefer or walking cooler, it will keep fermenting, but at a much slower rate. That is why referred doughs that stay overnight get such a rich, aromatic flavor, mainly because the yeast keeps fermenting. It will actually keep fermenting down to under 41 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius. Then it will go completely dormant at freezing temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. Well, that's all the questions I can answer for this session. Thank you for joining me today on Ask Dr. Lin. Remember, Bakerpedia can't be free without our sponsors. This session is sponsored by Dayasna, the dough experts, the makers of bakery machinery since 1885. Go to dayasna.com today to learn more. All right, before I go, please like and subscribe to this channel. See you the next time.